Hey guys, welcome back to another one. So today what I'm going to be showing you is how to actually scan, flush, and board a muskrat. So I just got one done, and then I have two more left to go. So I figured out have you guys come along for the ride. So muskrats are pretty easy animals to do. It's just a little time consuming because you don't want to cut into them as they air. They are very small and pretty fragile on the outside, so you don't want to be cutting too deep. So just like raccoons and everything else, we'll go ahead and make our initial cuts from hind foot to the vent. which I will go ahead and do right here. Just got done skinning a beaver, so this is why we're outside right now. Plus, in case you do pull and you end up releasing the internals out, they do get a little stinky, so I'd rather have that outside where I can kind of easily vent <laughs> compared to being inside and getting that all around. <laughs> so we made our initial cut. We'll go ahead and wrap each foot like normal and go get a different knife here actually. I like to use this smaller curved one that just kind of rings them better. Everyone has their own preference though. So we'll just wrap each foot now. Some people will actually pop them off with like scissors or whatever. I would, but I don't have a pair of scissors out here right now. So we just gotta work with what we got. So we got it around both of those legs. And we'll go ahead and wrap the front legs as well. That way when you're pulling, it just pulls off real nice. It doesn't make a teared mark or anything. So we got that. And just like that, the front one's free as well. Perfect. So we made our first initial cut right here. We'll go ahead, we'll give them a slight tug. We don't want to pull too much because that belly is pretty soft. And it'll open up really easily into the body cavity. They don't smell too bad, but it's not a fun experience. <laughs> so this one we already have started a little bit, so we'll just start pulling with our hands right around the leg. Just like that. cut away this small piece of connecting tissue just like that so when you come to the belly the belly is kind of the weak spot on muskrats very cautious very slow and very cautious is the name of the game only takes about half a second to open them up so, just got to be careful. Hopefully this doesn't get too non-PG, so it can stay in color, or else it might have to go black and white for you guys. For that, I apologize. So, I got it wrapped around basically on both sides, just like this. I'll get a little bit more, actually. I like to leave a little bit on the base of the tail as it just helps with actually putting them on the wire. So you're actually grabbing that bit and not the fur. So we'll try to take a little bit towards the end there. Perfect. Nice little nub for the actual stretcher to hold on to. So since we got that, you can easily pull up the back. Just be very cautious, like I said, about the 
stomach area. And that is the side that you're going to have problems with if you have any. He still has some duckweed and stuff on him, but it'll be just fine. I'll get that brushed off. There's no real things holding on. There's no mud or anything like that. So just where he comes from, as you guys saw, is a very duckweed filled place. So we got most of that here. I like to kind of wrap them up as we keep going here. Keeps them out of the way. You don't really need to use a knife. If you really wanted to, you can just rip and pull. But like I said, I don't really feel like smelling that again right now. I actually opened up the first one that I did today because I forgot just how easy they are to pull open. So this one, we're going to go nice and slow for you guys. Make sure I do my best to not open that body cavity because literally there's just this small piece of membrane right here and then you're in there. So I'm going to just use a knife. Nice and cautiously, I'm barely even touching it with my knife because their fur is very delicate as well. So we are almost past the most dangerous part. Most dangerous part is right here. So if you try to rip, you're most likely going to open it right up, right off the bat. So. And I just sliced in right there. But as long as we stay careful and get away from that mistaken cut, it won't smell too bad. Everything will stay in place. So you can see the little cut right here. I always cut towards the body because if I would have cut towards the fur there, I would have just cut a hole into it which then you have to patch, which takes time, which for a muskrat doesn't really make sense to do. So if you guys are basically skinning a muskrat for your first time, or the first time for the year, I highly suggest just using a knife for the first time. Get your bearings on them, see how you feel about them. From my area, these guys are very, very delicate which I feel like they might be everywhere. So we're basically out of the danger zone. Danger zone's right at that big thick part. So we'll just start pulling just a little bit, just like that. Pull on this side. I actually cut that connecting tissue. Just like that, and we'll get in here. Leave in the comments below how much you guys are actually going out trapping this year. I know with low prices, it's kind of stopping a lot of people, but for me, I feel as this is such a good experience to kind of get out there when no one else is going out, you know? You're able to try new things, try to improve your efficiency. That's kind of what I'm shooting for this year. Not really making money, but have a good time. Teach some friends about trapping. Teach some landowners about trapping. Actually, the landowner that I caught that beaver for, they were out party hunting for deer, and they were back at their house, so I decided to stop by, showed them the beaver, and they are just super excited. You know, seeing something that for us is so normal, because we're able to see so much of this. But for someone that's probably, for being honest, has never seen a beaver up close, it's such a nice sight. You're like, wow, that's what they actually look like. Like, yeah, you've seen photos and stuff, but like having an actual comparison is completely different. Working off of photos and stuff just isn't the same as actually seeing what they look like, you know? So we're getting towards the other foot. So since we wrung that foot already, it just popped right off. Nice and easy. 
And then with this leg, if I can grab a little bit here, I just pop my knife right through, give myself a little thumb hole. With that thumb hole, I can basically slowly roll and it pops it out. Not losing much fur, there's a little piece right there, but not too worried about it. So now we're basically coming on to the head. I just like to flip them around. You could probably do this on, you know, an actual table stretching machine, which, or a skinning machine, which I have, but I just find this to be so much easier. You don't have to clean up after, it's just the truck. It's supposed to rain this week anyway, so I'll clean this all up, right? <laughs> Finish this up here. Small little hole right there. And then we'll cut the other ear hole. Can basically work it with my hand down. We'll cut a little further. Find that eye, which is right there. Cut that one. And then we'll also cut the other. is right there. Some bugs out now that it's hot enough. Kind of annoying, but how it goes. Can't control the weather, just how you gotta play. So we're past the ears and the eyes, so we can give it a nice tug there. I'll actually use the weight of the hide which is quite minimal but it does help with just wear and tear on your hand especially if you're doing quite a few of these and i'm finishing up we're coming up to the nose which will pull all the way down to it and we'll cut off lower jaw cut off we got the nice hide right here, which we can go like this, and you can see nicely done, ready to go. We'll go ahead and actually time lapse the last one for you guys, kind of speed it up a little bit. We're in the fur shed here, ready to stretch and flesh. So I got the first one out of the way. Just a good practice run as usual. We only have 14% on the battery of the GoPro, so gotta move quick. <laughs> so with muskrats actually, you don't wanna take off all this red membrane. You wanna leave most of this on. We're just trying to look for the bigger chunks of stuff that we don't really need on there. So we'll kind of flatten this out here. I typically don't get that many muskrats, so I don't have like a board just for them or anything. So we'll just kind of look them over. Usually there's some right by the ears that we need to take off. Just right here. Just 
just like that. Got some on this side. Especially with muskrats, you gotta be very, very gentle. They will rip in basically half a second. So all we're doing is we're looking for those main chunks of meat. We're taking them off. We're not going too aggressive. I keep wiping it just to kind of take a look, you know, take a gander. See if there's anything extra that I'm needing. When you tear the belly, that's where you get all that meat from. Since I tore it on that other muskrat, it really came off quite a bit. So that makes it even more difficult because on the belly of a muskrat is even easier to break. So you just got to be very very careful so we'll go nice and slow not a speed thing at all we don't have that many here so we don't need to be rushing I do have a couple coons that I was wanting to get flesh tonight as well not sure if I'll be able to get those done just for the sake of I work in the morning <laughs> But we can always toss them in the freezer if we don't get to them, so I'm not too, not too worried. With these being the first few of the season for me, it's just kind of a learning, a learning experience. Kind of see how much you can get away with on them. Typically they don't have that much fat or anything like that on them. So you don't really have to be too worried. It's usually around the armpits and the face. Like right here, which you can almost just take off with a knife, which I most likely will. And if this is more comfortable for you than a fleshing knife, by all means do it. It's not really going to slow you down too much, I would say, since you're just looking for those main pieces of meat still hanging on. So tear off that little bit there's a little bit extra right here that we can take off nice and slow and easy just like that there's a little extra right there because if you start going gung-ho with the flushing knife that's when you're gonna start making mistakes and cutting holes I'm putting it all lower down on my fleshing bean because I'm actually going to throw it all the way later so I'm not just leaving it there <laughs> so this one's pretty much ready to go I use wire stretchers for my muskrats since I don't get that many and it doesn't really matter too much I would say for presentation value so you always put them fur in skin out make sure they are pretty even on both sides here kind of messed up on his face a little bit which makes it a little more entertaining for you guys I would say go ahead and bring that up Get this pulled up here, just like that. We'll go ahead and pull it taut. You're not just ripping on it. You're just making a nice small pull. Just like that. We'll go ahead and move this one up. Go ahead, pull this down right here, right where that base of the tail was. We'll pull this down as well, making it nice and tight. Flip it to the other side, grab the other one. Pull this down to the base of the tail. Get it to poke 
through and pull it down just like that so we got that one all done hopefully i have enough battery life so i can quickly time lapse going through the other one here Ooh. 